Luke here with the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel and welcome to the Arctic. For the next three days I'm taking a team of dogs mushing through the mountains and frozen rivers of the Arctic. I'm hunting ptarmigan, camping in hot tents, eating amazing food, and having a great time. But to do it I'm gonna have to drive across the entire state of Alaska and through several blizzards. Big flock of ptarmigan in the road. Oh, those stinkers are fast. Not fast enough. Hi guys, welcome to Coltfoot, Alaska. It's good seeing you guys. All right, I'll see you on the road. See ya. Oh. All right guys, it's late. I'm gonna get to bed. I'll see you in the morning. The days are starting to get long up here in the Arctic. It's 6.30 in the morning, the sun's already up. It's gonna be a little slick. Cool. Looks like it's about eight degrees Fahrenheit or negative 14 degrees Celsius. Alrighty. Well, I'm gonna try to hit the road as soon as possible. I've got about 150 miles to drive. Ugh. Whoa, hold. Wheels were frozen to the ground. I can see a herd of caribou on that frozen river down there. I'm at the rendezvous point and it's negative 18 degrees out. I've got a friend who's a dog musher that's gonna meet me here, but I'm about an hour early. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get my gear on, get ready, wait for him to show up. Look at my car. Oh man. Ugh. Some thick mud sickles. Yeah, you can see a dog team coming across the tundra. Doing good, Laurel. Oh, that's a good looking team of dogs. Beautiful day today. Oh, it's gorgeous. But yeah, well, welcome to the team here. Oh. We're breaking. All right, so this is my buddy, Laurel Eklund, and uh, he's gonna take me out mushing. Oh, welcome to the Arctic. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Hey, you just got finished with the Iditarod, didn't you? Yeah, and uh, Lancer here led most away, a couple small teams, but when you're driving big teams like this, you're not hanging off or grab the gear. That way. Yeah. Getting out here with the dog. Long? Yeah, I'll come or for uh sort of the... Alright, Trident, come on in. Good dog. Alright guys, let me introduce you to my dog team here. This is Lancer, the lead dog. Lance, you want some pets, don't you? And a swing dog here. We got Vasilia and Noya. And my wheel dogs, we got Gandalf, tried it. Lead dog in the front, swing dog behind the lead dog, wheel dogs right in front of the sled. Thank <laughs> you. 
These dogs are so juiced up, you gotta ride the brake to keep them from going too far up. Oh. Oh. oh, that powder is a lot of work. We're taking the dogs about eight miles down this frozen river to Laurel's camp. Well, this, folks, is the deep Arctic. We're 200 miles above the Arctic Circle, and it's absolutely beautiful. All right, all right. See all that steam up ahead? That's where water from the river is coming up on top of the ice, called overflow. Oh. This is all frozen overflow right now. It's slick. My socks are starting to get wet, which kind of stinks when it's negative 18. We're on frozen overflow. You can hear the ice popping as we drive over it. Hundred twenty years ago, this was the only way to travel the interior of Alaska. Mushers would go hundreds of miles to deliver supplies to the various communities. And in many parts of Alaska, it's still the best way to travel. So there's two commands. Left is ha, and right is gi. That tells the dogs which path to take. He, he. But they're pretty smart. They know where they're going. Driving this sled and filming at the same time is pretty tricky. This sled actually needs to be steered. Oh, sorry dogs. And so I have to be really careful with which way I'm leaning. Otherwise the sled veers off the trail and gets stuck in the deep snow. And trying to do this one-handed while I film is causing me to go off the trail a bit and it's irritating the dogs. Oh. Good job. Good job, guys. Oh, look at that. Good boy. Hi, I'm Ron. Hey, Ron, Luke Nichols. Kid and Ash for better weather. Last night was a little cold, though. Yeah, negative, it was negative it was 24. It's below here. It probably hit 30, 40 below on the river. Oh, all right, there you go, Noya. Laura, you have the most epic beard icicles ever. <laughs> One too. day when I become a man, I'm going to have a, a beard that looks like that. <laughs> Sometimes it's, it gets so crusted, it's hard to, to when you're, it's hard to eat or drink. It's just a pain. Uh, yeah. oh. It's kind of toasty warm in here. A little bit of greenhouse effect going on. Tell you what, it's time for lunch. There we go. I've got a large wedge of brie soaked in honey and garlic. We're gonna melt this up and eat it with pilot bread. I got some leftover ptarmigan stew from our trip to Nome. So uh, we're gonna make some of that too. All right, so I got the frozen ptarmigan stew. I'm gonna put it in the jacuzzi. And we're gonna put the honey garlic brie hors d'oeuvre in here. Yeah, it's very free. All right, you guys want to I'll just open my own. Man, it. Oh, man. Part of the experience. You got exotic cheeses and sauces on pilot bread. That's bougie bush. Mm. Oh.
That's good. That was really good. Oh, yeah. Honey and brie is a hard combo to beat. Man. Just to get food for ourselves. Um, and the, what happened was... So, Ptarmigan sweet potato stew here. Yeah. We got, got a stew here. It's like green beans, sweet potatoes, carrots, ptarmigan. When I catch the ptarmigan, I, I breast them out. And then oh, I take yeah. the carcasses and I make a broth. And then I pick it and make a stew with it. The caribou liver can be interesting. What kinds of works up? Yeah, we're going to... Oh, it feels good to get some food in me. But I think we're going to take the dogs out and explore a little bit. I might do a little hunting too while we're at it. So this is the gun I brought along. It's an over-under. It's got two barrels. The bottom barrel is a 20 gauge shotgun and the top barrel is a 222 rifle. It's a good gun for anything from wolves to ptarmigan. A whole bunch of ptarmigan right there. Look at that. We barely got 100 yards from camp and there was already a huge flock of ptarmigan. Laurel, you got us some birds. Yeah. Go here. So this right here is a willow ptarmigan. They turn brown in the summer and white in the winter time. And they get in these huge flocks in the winter time and they're absolutely wonderful to eat. Look at this place is covered in ptarmigan tracks. Look at that. All of those. We're kind of on the lookout for ptarmigan and moose. Laurel's got a permit for a moose, so if we see one, he's going to take it. Oh, they're right there. See him, Laurel? What you got? You got three more? Oh, yeah. We got three more here. Set of moose prints right here. You can tell he was walking that way. Oh, deep snow. Yeah, it kind of, kind of drops off there. That's slick. You got you got a little snow like right there, there, and everywhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now we're cooking. There's some target right over there. There you go. It's a plump ptarmigan. Holy cow, that huge. <laughs> yeah. Good sized ptarmigan. That's a that's a girthy bird. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, oh. Hold on, hold on. Oh. You guys are excited to get home. So how many miles do you think we did on the dog sled? 19, 18 miles. Sheesh, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> Gonna get the dogs a little snack before dinner. We got some pork loin. Backside. Okay, oh, yo, oh sorry at the back. Hey, hey there you go. Yeah. You guys earned it. Nice. A little bit in there. That fuel he's using is the runoff for making whiskey. It's the alcohol that comes off first when you distill liquor. The stuff that makes you blind so you don't drink it, but it burns good. Let's see it's, There you go. Let's get that lit. It's already hot water, warm water in there. That's the pee. Yep. And we get this from the processing plant. Right back up there, back. Chop it up, beef. 
Got a block of fat? Yeah, we'll chop off a few good chunks off of here. Let's render down beef fat. Just pouring boiling water over that lard and beef. <laughs> How many calories did these dogs eat? Six to 8,000 calories. But then on a really tough day, like say on the Iditarod Trail or racing, because they're probably burning up to 10 to 12,000 calories. I just realized you're in the wrong business. You should be doing a weight loss camp where we hook people up to dog sleds. You want to burn 15,000 calories in one day? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, come, come to Laurel's weight loss camp. <laughs> All right, after I take the breast meat out, I usually save the carcasses to make stew later, but uh, I've got some dogs here. I think you might want it instead. Hey boys, who wants a ptarmigan snack? Hey, they were excited about those ptarmigan snacks. Got a frozen spaghetti meat sauce here. Yeah. <laughs> Wet metal spoons. Spaghetti and meat sauce. I don't think I'm gonna come inside so my food doesn't freeze. My I tell you, that was one of the most physically demanding things I've done in a while. I'm uh, looking forward to this meal. <laughs> What's up? Hey, this is good. Thanks. First, you that brie. Yeah. I think like. I think I just I blew your mind on that one a <laughs> little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah. There. Ooh. <laughs> Getting ready to cook up my ptarmigan breasts. I'm like, I put them down right over here. Where did they go? They were right there. Here's the, here's the bag they were on. All right, which one of you did it is? I bet it was Alder. She was loose. There was one dog loose. She got a little bonus snack tonight. Not a lot of trees out here above the Arctic Circle, so finding firewood's a bit of a challenge, and these things are a lot easier to pack in than actual firewood, so. Alright. Two liter bottle full of boiling water. I'm gonna stick this in my sleeping bag. Put my hot water bottle like that. I really wanna make some bread tomorrow, so I brought along this bag of bread flour and some yeast, add some water to it, let it ferment overnight, and we'll have bread in the morning. It's about midnight and I'm exhausted. I'm gonna take a couple Advil, go to bed, and I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning. Well, this right here is a frozen raw bread pudding. It's basically scrambled French toast. Eggs, butter, sugar, milk, vanilla extract, raisins, mixed up with shredded bread. Put it in a thing of boiling water and let it cook for about 15, 20 minutes. So this is smoked pork jowl bacon. Cooking this first is a great way to grease your pan. 
Oh, look at that doe. It's all puffy and great. Nice piece of bread. Look at that. There we go, pork jowl bacon, fresh bread, butter and honey. That's not too bad. There you go, that's bread pudding. If you like French toast, you'll love bread pudding. I like to put a little bit of almond extract in here. Really good. There we go. Hey, Laurel, you want breakfast? Make sure everyone's eating. That's uh, cooked pork jowl, a couple of loaves of bread with some butter and honey. And uh, this is the bread pudding. Okay. I've already eaten, so that's all fair game, man. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. You I, like to come in? No, I just saw some ptarmigan up on the hill. I'm going to go put on my snowshoes and go see if I can make a little noise off. Hey, take your time. I'll see you in a little bit. All right, all right, take your time. <laughs> Flock of ptarmigan right over there by where we get our water. They've moved off a little bit, but I'm going to go hike up there and see if I can't shoot one. You can tell how cold it is out here by the sound of the snow. The squeakier the snow, the colder it is. There's like 30 of them just running up the hill because they see me. Oh, see that one just flew. They're just a little too skittish, a little too far away. How you doing? I don't know for sure who ate my ptarmigan last night, but that's my number one suspect. Oh, we got dog breakfast. Uh, it's... <laughs> We're fed, the dogs are fed. I think it's time to get ready. I just winged this one. Stay there, don't you? Give me a ball. If this looks mellow and easy, it's because I have to put the camera down during the crazy part. This is like driving a muscle car that has a mind of its own. Oh, wow. We're gonna go 25 miles today. So we're gonna be doing this for several hours. That's only about a quarter of what these dogs do when they're racing. Gee. So right now there's absolutely no trail for the dogs to follow. So it's really tricky for them to know exactly where to go. Laurel can give them instructions. He'll say ha for them to go left or gee to go right. If the dogs just aren't getting it, Laurel has to get off his sled, go to the lead dog and walk in front of him and point him in the right direction. Oh, good boy. Yeah. Really nice spot right here. Oh, right on the ridge. Yeah, yeah a bunch of muskox. Let me see. If you guys don't know what muskox are, they look kind of like a Scottish Highland cow that wants to kick your butt. But they like to get up on those mountains and there's one on the very tip of that ridge and there's two right on the edge of the ridge. Ooh, you want to date? Got some dates? Yeah, well, even if we can't shoot a muskox, we're not going to go hungry, right? No. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I can't remember if they're frozen or if they have a pit inside. I'm gonna sit here and use the binoculars. And just look for animals, especially at the willow patches at the bottom of the washes. Just keep scanning. I'll tell you what, I haven't seen any moose, but there's a ton of moose tracks over there. Well, I think we ought to move down there. Yeah. It's a nice little break. Looked around. We're gonna go down to that lake. <laughs> Looks 
looks like a bear took out the door. Yeah. Looks like there's an old hunting cabin. All the supplies and everything in that cabin was probably brought in by float plane, landed right there. It's a beautiful area. Gotta wear my balaclava to keep me from getting sunburned. Hold on, don't stop. Oh, guys, 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 guys. Oh. I'm good. I had very little control over that. <laughs> this is the type of weather where you can get snow blindness. You come out here without eye protection and that sun will reflect off the ice and sunburn your eyes. And after about two or three days, you lose your vision. Or in mild cases, your eyeballs just hurt and they itch and it's just really unpleasant. We're mushing across the top of a frozen river here. All the way from there to there, the banks of the river. I can hear the ice popping over there. It's so warm out that it's increasing the water flowing under the ice and it doesn't have anywhere to go. So it has to come up through the ice and flow across the top. It's making the ice shift and crack. I think we're going to stop and make some lunch. If you can find something solid to build a fire on, then it'll save us a lot of digging. All right, here's a place to build a fire. I got uh, frozen mava dofu. That sound All good? Right. Kind of like a curry. <laughs> Cherry cobbler too. It, it might be. Two things of boiling bag rice. The mava dofu. Do that. Give that 11 minutes and it'll be done. I'll never go back to it, truthfully. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever want to come back to your So this is uh, mava dofu. It's a Japanese version of a Chinese dish here. The ground beef, green onions, tofu, and this red chili bean paste is really good. While we're eating that, I'm gonna put some cherry cobbler in, the, in here. You gotta eat quick or it gets cold. Where do you like taste to see? All right, I gotta just try the bit, but it's okay. I'm trying to use the sick one for my dish. Pretty amazing. All right. I, I love you're eating that with a stick there. That's that's uh, well, now my first rodeo for getting a fork. All those people in Asia using two sticks to eat. Come on, yeah, you only need one. one. A lot of stuff, a lot of spear fishing, and but like you know, how you guys doing? Once the sun gets down, it's gonna get cold. There's always a huge temperature swing between night and day when you have clear, sunny days like this. There's two muskox on the top of that hill. Oh, that is so cool. Just keeping an eye over here for moose and foxes. Been seeing a lot of tracks. Let's go. Corner. You ready? Oh, here we go. Oh. oh, you guys are good. Oh. My boots are wet. <laughs> Huh. Huh. 
Good boy. Good boy. Oh, I definitely got sunburned today. <laughs> oh, we got... Some ptarmigan curry. Oh, this food smells good. It is so late, it's almost 11 p.m. I've got to hurry and get things ready for bed. I'm exhausted. My compliments to the chef. Get this stove going here. There we go. I'm gonna take some Advil, go to bed. I'll see you in the morning. Oh. Morning. All right, I think it's time for some breakfast. For breakfast, I got an omelet. It's egg, cheese, onions, peppers, mushrooms, salt, pepper, all the good stuff. I'm just gonna put it in a pot of boiling water. There we go. If you wanna eat well, but you don't wanna do a lot of fancy cooking out in the field, frozen vacuum sealed meals are the way to do it. I think the dogs woke up. <laughs> all right, that's good. Was good that was also a lot of food <laughs> all right time to get up and get dressed oh these are all dry oh those are all dry it's the nice thing about camping in a hot tent things dry very quickly oh. Oh. it's not a ton but you guys want another loaf of bread oh yeah love some i, I did i did all right i caught up a little bit oh yeah the, the frozen beaten eggs, nice. No way. And I, uh, well, I think I'll start cleaning up my, my tent a little bit. It looks like a bomb went off in there, so. Pretty thirsty. I'm gonna go get some water. We were hoping to find some caribou and moose here, but nobody's really seen much of anything, so everyone's breaking down and we're gonna go move spots. Pretty good hole underneath your stove there. I was thinking to myself. I can't believe you got your cots didn't just like fall in like a giant sinkhole. <laughs> well, that's go. how it goes. There we go. When Laurel starts bagging his legs, I think that's telling you we're going to run into some overflow on the river. Okay, I know I should probably just be focused on getting packed up and out of here, but a bunch of tarming are back at that little spot, and uh, I think I might have to give him some attention. Okay, nice. I'm assuming you wouldn't mind some ptarmigan if I'm successful. <laughs> There's the blood trail. It's going that way.
There we go. Got a ptarmigan. The, oh. Well, there we go. I know the guys wanted more ptarmigan, so. Oh, no, 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 no. There we go. The loaded sled's a lot harder to pull up in the deep snow, so I've got to help a lot more. But when you're pushing, you can't go at a human pace. You have to push at a husky pace. Whew. So you're sprinting through knee deep snow and it's just killer. slipped out from underneath me and I just held on and got dragged for a little bit. But I managed to get it upright and back on the sled without stopping, so yeah, that's something. Oh, that's deep. Oh, oh this is... My sled tipped over in the overflow and water got in my sled and I think my jackets are all wet. I know this glove's full of water. Up, 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 up. A pleasure yeah well laurel thank you so much for a great time that was a lot of fun if you guys are in alaska and you would like to do some dog mushing too check out skokum expedition that's laurel's business and i'll put a link to his website in the video description below oh yeah you guys are going caribou hunting yeah we got about another four or five days left left out here before we make our way home hey take care enjoy the rest of your time hey thank you yeah. oh whoo all in all, I did about 50 miles by dog team on this trip. That was pretty cool. Definitely want to do that again. But I've got about 16 hours of driving or 758 miles to go to get home. And there's supposed to be a snowstorm in Attigan Pass and I don't want to be on this side of the pass when that happens. There are some crazy snow drifts on this road. I'm happy to drive in the tracks of the semi-trailers, but unfortunately I don't have the same clearance that they do. I just have to give it a lot of gas and hope for the best. Uh, oh, oh. Those snow drifts were deep. They took out my trailer lights. nasty. I've seen three flip semi trucks and those ones are just sitting there in the middle of the road. Done about 150 miles of unplowed highway. Where is my honey buddy? Smooches, smooches, purple warp.
<laughs> Yay! Uh, if you like that video, make sure to check out the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel where we have hundreds of videos just like this. And if you want to see our newest adventures, make sure to click subscribe so you'll get notifications.